Today, I am told my study material is very confusing. Actually, they tell me that I should edit it down so that uh, I don't have so much uh, misunderstanding. They said it should be done like, maybe like a Reader's Digest, modern day versions. I don't know whether it's uh, difficult to understand or how much confusion it is, uh, but uh, let me uh, let me go back a little bit history here. When I in right after World War II, when I started to tell people about this thing, I had written a little piece of paper. It wasn't very long. It was just one little sheet, part of a sheet. Well, for about uh, eight or ten years, that's just about all I did. But in, during this time, I passed out a lot of these things. I had a, hundreds and hundreds of people in the boat, and I was yakking my head off. Now, in all this time period time, as far as I can remember, there was only one person who really got the message from this one little sheet. So I uh, decided to expand it just a little bit, a little bit more detail. So I wrote another little booklet that I drew, a, put a bunch of drawings in and expanded some of the, 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 trying to explain this thing a little more in detail. This didn't seem to help too much. It probably helped a little bit, but really I really wasn't getting through. So then I prepared a, something a little bit more detail, which was a spoon plug and lesson. And in this, I went through about everything, drew pictures, and, and gave the whole little story on expansion. This helped some, probably. Then later, I wrote the basic book. I felt that uh, I must get the, all the basics in here as quickly as possible, be sure that I got all the bakes in. This helped some, but I still wasn't satisfied as I was getting the message across. Then I wrote the, uh, the home study course. I imagine over a period of time uh, uh, I did make a little progress, but today, I'm still being told from all directions that my material is complicated, it's too, too much of it, it's confusion, and that uh, it's uh, difficult to understand. I've given a lot of thought to this, and, but uh, I've come to close, uh, I've try, I asked myself, why is this so confusing? So I've come down to, to several little items here. One is the fact that I'm not a trained writer. I never did consider myself a writer. But then as I thought more, that, that there's other things maybe that might be involved here. And I came down to this, that the average fisherman today is bombarded from all sides with things that are completely different from what I've been preaching. And so I'm a small voice in the wilderness compared to the other voices that are out there that are more powerful. And especially, they, the people have a tendency to like being told maybe shortcuts success. Another thing that uh, probably the most important conclusion that I came to why my material is confusing or it isn't clear, it's difficult to understand, was the fact that most fishermen live in a very small fishing world. They seem to think that the whole fishing thing rotates around their particular that their particular area or their particular fishing. Maybe some of the things that they think are facts could be laughed at in other areas. 
you've heard me say that to go fishing and then go home and see if you miss something. And most likely you will, because I have this come to me all the time. Then now you also heard me say, fish as many different lakes, as many different fishing situations, as many different weather conditions as you can. And in the process, maybe this thing will clear up just a little bit. So when you analyze it, you may be living in a very small fishing world. Now, when I prepared spoon plug and I prepared it in mind, things that I would put down was for me because I expected to fish in many areas, in many different fishing situations. I didn't want to be tied to one place. So my, when I put this down, I had to put it down for every type of fishing situation that a guy could probably run into. I wasn't going to say one thing in one area that might confuse a guy in another area. I had to put the facts of what made a fish tick and what you and I must do to catch him. That's, and I couldn't take an isolated area and do this. So this may be partly why it's confusing, that it's too broad for his fishing world. That's all I'm going to say except this. Your basic guideline that you've been passed out and I've been putting it before you quite often is just like that first sheet that I wrote right after World War II. So I'm going back to the basic. I'm going back to the basic guideline tonight and we're going to see if we can't clear this thing up so with that thought in mind we're going to get into our program with the Blue Parker's basic guideline which says the home of the fish where he spends the greater part of his time a sanctuary from a change in a hostile environment is somewhere in the deep or deepest water in the area being fished. When in the sanctuary depth, the fish are normally so dormant and are so deep, they are almost impossible to locate or catch. As fishermen, we are saved due to the fact that fish do not stay so dormant or so deep all the time. Once or twice on the average fishing day, they will become active and may move towards shallow water. We are saved again because when the fish become active and move towards shallower water, they do not go in just any direction. The route they take has bottom features, structure breaks and break lines, that show them the way. As the fish move along a bottom feature, structure, they will pause or stop at things, breaks and break lines, on the bottom. How far they go along a migration route before, toward the shallows and how long they stay at a break or break line before turning back to deep water is dependent upon, controlled by, the weather and water conditions at that particular time. And this is the last paragraph that you see there, which says, if you and I desire to consistently catch fish whenever or wherever we go fishing, we must control the depth and speed of our lures, our bait, on and or around the bottom features, structure, brakes, brake lines, the fish are using in their movements and migrations. Let me say that again so that we get the picture. If you and I desire to consistently catch fish whenever or wherever we go fishing, we must control the depth and speed of our lures, our bait, on and all around the bottom features, structure, break, break line, the fish are using in our movements and migration. That's the whole ball of wax. We don't, that's how simple fish is. I didn't say anything else. 
I didn't talk about weather. I didn't talk about water. I didn't talk about uh, whether the fish felt good or anything. That is the story of successful fishing whenever or wherever you and I go fishing. <laughs>